Ibrutinib has been studied in the frontline setting. There was a cohort of patients who were treated several years ago, about 31 patients who received ibrutinib in the frontline setting. And so we have long-term follow-up from that limited population of patients. That limited population of patients has done extremely well over time. There's been, I think, two events among the 31 patients where they, one patient had a Richter's transformation and came off, um, and there was a subsequent patient that came off more recently. But for the most part, those patients have done exceptionally well. Subsequent to that experience, there was a randomized trial referred to as Resonate 2 that was done to evaluate in patients over 65 frontline chlorambucil versus frontline ibrutinib, uh, where patients were randomly assigned to one of those treatments and then followed for their outcomes. And that trial was very positive, favoring a longer progression free survival for patients who received ibrutinib over uh, chlorambucil as their first treatment. Um, so that was the first randomized trial showing improvement in outcomes associated with ibrutinib. There is some criticism that gets thrown out there with regard to that trial design, particularly with the choice of the comparator arm. So chlorambucil people would not think of today as a fair comparator because it's really what we think as, uh, of as an inferior treatment. Uh, an inferior frontline treatment, a better standard treatment today would be chlorambucilobinutuzumab or bundamustine rituximab. Um, but other than that criticism, the trial clearly showed an improvement in outcomes associated with, uh, with ibrutinib therapy. Um, that trial excluded patients with 17P deletion. So we have limited data for patients with 17P deletion receiving ibrutinib in the frontline setting particularly in terms of what the expectation is for their progression-free survival. We don't know how long their remission will last with ibrutinib monotherapy in the frontline setting for patients with 17P. Patients with 17P are rare in the frontline setting. It's about 5 to 8 percent of frontline patients. Um, and my expectation is that certainly the progression-free survival will be longer for frontline 17P than for salvage 17P. And the patients who or have relapsed disease with 17P and receive ibrutinib, as I mentioned, their progression-free survival is about 32 months. So the expectation for those frontline patients is that they're going to have a longer progression-free survival, median survival, than, than 32 months. But um, it may be more limited than the non-17P deletion. Um, the only, the, the major concern with um, ibrutinib in the frontline setting, um, it, it's an exceptional treatment. Patients do exceptionally well. The concerns are that it's treatment that doesn't get a good deep remission, so patients have to remain on treatment indefinitely. If they stop treatment, we expect that their disease will grow again and they will need treatment. Um, and will need, the length of time between when they stop the ibrutinib and need treatment will be variable. Um, but certainly they will need to be retreated most likely if they stop uh, the ibrutinib. And the main reason that patients in the frontline setting have been stopping ibrutinib isn't because it's not working any longer. It's because they experience some ibrutinib-associated toxicity that makes them come off. Things like arthralgias, myalgias, um, rash, uh, oral ulcers, fatigue, uh, those things can be treatment limiting with regard to ibrutinib, more so than the drug not working uh, for patients with a, who are receiving it in the frontline setting.